this argument about uh, running for office before, and so I went ahead and looked it up. And it turns out that of the 43 states that have an elected attorney general, only six of them, of them have a governor who served as the attorney general. So while it may be an office that you can use to run for office, it's not highly successful in, in being an office that, has, that uh, allows you to win the office of governor. Um, and uh, and I also just uh, want to reiterate the point that was made by the sponsor that we have a constitutional amendment that is up for a vote in November of this year. And if that is passed, as I hope it is passed, then it will uh, once and for all ensconce in the Constitution uh, that uh, we have a, a, a founding father's method for selecting our judges. And at that point, we will need to do something to change the method by which we used to select our attorney general. So that if it's not this resolution, I hope it's another resolution that we can put forward, uh, or perhaps even another uh, a bill that I have coming later this year that would say that, hey, the attorney general needs to be responsive to the people. We should not, in Tennessee, be subject to the whims of one person who is now twice removed from the people when we're making decisions about whether to challenge acts like Obamacare. Thank you. Further discussion? Senator Henry? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This question, Mr. Speaker, is not a new one. I remember a few years ago in the 70s, 80s, uh, Ambassador Ash, who then sat in our body, proposed this method, and his argument primarily was it, I mean, not flat out, but he said, well, there's no way for Republicans to gain office. We need another officer for Republicans to gain office. I said, well, just slow down, Victor, and you'll gain an office because you gain the majority of votes, and you get your Supreme Court. Well, he did. But then since that time, I went up to Virginia for the Council of State Government, some of the federalism project up there. Because the Attorney General who up there was elected had been recommended to me as a very strong federalist. I ought to enlist him, so I did. Well, I hadn't, well, I hadn't, left, West, I hadn't left Virginia long before he was out running for governor. Then, most recently, I don't know whether you all noticed or not, again in Virginia, they elected the attorney general up there, and the elected one, and he was charged with the defense of a lawsuit against the state which had to do with uh, either abortion or marriage. The, the state amended the Constitution to so say you could not do things like that. Well, he not only went to court, he switched sides. After he got in court, he's on the state of Virginia payroll. He switched sides and made a statement in the newspaper, I want Virginia to be on the forward side for one time. That was elected attorney general. Folks, I wish, I wish we would just begin this discussion. And I wish we were where we could hear what Senator Oldby had to say yesterday. The Jim from Blunt encapsulated the arguments beautifully. In fact, I'll ask if the gentleman from Blunt will yield. Yield. Senator Blunt, Senator, Senator Dobie, would you recapitulate what you told the body yesterday, please, sir? No, You're recognized to capitulate. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, to the gentleman from Davidson County, thank you very much for those kind words, and if um, people are watching this, they would see my, my face has turned pink at, at your comments, and I'm very grateful, and they are heart, heartfelt. Basically, the words were, we have had this system in place since 1870. 
and some folks may not like the way we choose the Attorney General, but it is the way the framers of this Constitution wrote it. And it has, in fact, worked. No one on this floor has ever pointed out to a single act of misfeasance, nonfeasance, or malfeasance by the Attorney General. We should only change a system if it isn't working. And simply because one of us or several of us may disagree with a decision of the Attorney General doesn't mean the system isn't working. It means we disagree, just like we disagree with each other from time to time, and that doesn't mean this system doesn't work. I've heard it said here on the floor, and this is not recapitulation, uh, Senator Henry, but I've heard it said that, and I must take issue, I've heard it said that the members of the Supreme Court are not elected. That's simply not true. The members of the Supreme Court, or our appellate courts, are appointed by the governor and then stand for a retention election. Now, you may not like that, but a retention election is an election. Members in the other chamber and this chamber are often appointed when someone uh, leaves office during their term. They're appointed by the county commission of their home county, and then they stand for election. But a retention election is an election, just like a referendum, which is a yes or no vote, is an election. And again, you may not like that, but the simple fact of the matter is it is an election. And so they do stand for election. But the issue before us today is not the Supreme Court or how the Supreme Court, is, uh, the members of the Supreme Court come to office. The issue is how the Attorney General comes into office and has come into office since 1870. And no one has ever pointed out that it hasn't worked, that we haven't benefited from the independency of that office and the rendering of opinions that we can rely upon. And so that's why I believe it is true that if it ain't broke, you don't fix it. This is not a problem. It's not broke, and it doesn't need to be fixed. Again, thank you to the gentleman from Davidson County. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have Senator Campfield and Senator Nice. Senator Campfield. Thank you. I must defer from my colleague that there is no problem. Now, we can all say selection means election. I think anybody in com with common sense who's probably watching on TV, if we said we all want to be appointed and then only stand for a yes, no retention vote, and that's our election, I think they'd laugh us out of office, or they should. Selection is an election, and, but that's what the Attorney General has said it is. But we don't have any problem. Some people say they don't have a problem with that. Well, they all talk about corruption. Okay, well, they, they could be corrupted. Our attorney general could be corrupted by running for office. I guess that's true, just like any of us probably could be corrupted. But they seem to forget that one of the biggest decisions he ever made was for the people who are his bosses. And what, that was to say that a retention election is an election. Well, who was he catering to? other than the people who voted to put him in office in the first place. To say that's not corruption, but possibly running for office is. They say there's no problem. We don't have anything. We're not fixing anything. If it's not broke, why fix it? Well, wait a second. We've got constitutional amendments coming up the next couple of years that are fixing problems that were started with our Attorney General opinions. Our Attorney General said, well, yeah, income tax is constitutional. We can have that. Well, wait a second, we're having a whole, we're all having a, we all voted on trying to stop an income tax because our attorney general said, well, yeah, even though our constitution says you can't have an income tax, you can't have an income tax. Our attorney general won't defend our legislation that we bring up. We've had things, I know when we did redistricting, he wouldn't defend our plans for, redist for redistricting unless it was his plan, unless he agreed to it. 
So say he's defending us, he's supporting us, he's doing what the will of the people. Well, he's not. To say he's, going, he's, he's working for the people of Tennessee, when we have asked him, I don't know how many times, that we've said, hey, let's, let's join the fight against Obamacare. He wouldn't. He refused. You know, everybody keeps saying, well, we've got problems and, and, and the election is a terrible idea. Well, all the problems with democracy can be fixed with more democracy, not less. It's very simple to me. If either he's bad, he's not doing a good job, as the case where all these ones that have run for attorney general have run for governor, fine. They don't get elected. They don't win. Let them stand on their record of the things they've supported and the things they've spoken on, just like we all have to do. In the end, at some point, we have to trust somebody. Are we going to trust legislators or we can trust the people? Now, we can all sit up here on high, high horses and say, we're smarter, we know better, or we can trust the people. The more I see of government, the more I trust the people. Thank you. Mr. Nicely. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On a lighter note, it does my heart good to see all these people bragging on an old-time election, the virtues and values of an old-time election. And I hope you will remember that when I bring my bill to allow me to elect a few of my directors of schools in these rural counties. Mr. Speaker, I think we've said all that needs to be said on this. This is not a choice between Senator Green's legislation. Two-thirds of you last year, including myself, agreed that we need another process uh, to either appoint or elect an attorney general. We don't know what's going to happen with the uh, constitutional amendment on the, con on the selection of judges next year. We don't know what's going to happen with Senator Green's resolution over in the House. Next year, though, if we vote for this today, We'll have a choice next year of which way we want to go uh, with the, either the election or the selection of the Attorney General. So I ask for your uh, vote today on SJR 123.